Do you want the strongest build? The best endgame class? Maybe the fastest leveling guide? <laughs> well, me too. The truth is, nobody really knows exactly what that is yet. Theory crafting is fun, exciting, interesting. But that's all that it is. Theories. Every tier list, build guide, leveling guide out there is just pure speculation based on what we know. Hold on, here, let me show you. These tier lists here are from the best content creators out there top quality play, and dedication to what they do. Right before Season 2, they all ranked the Barbarian near or at the bottom of the tier list. Do you remember what happened? I started that season with a Barbarian, despite the tier lists, and all of a sudden, I found myself sitting at the top of the food chain, and the hardest content Diablo 4 has ever seen was released that season, the Abattoir of Seer. There was an explosion of Barbarians dominating the path. But wait, what happened? They were supposed to be at the bottom of the list. What happened next? Everybody started complaining about how strong the Barbarians were. So then the Sorks doubled down. They started gaining ground on the Barbarian and soon started rivaling them. And then came the Druids. They flew to the top, getting the fastest clears out there because someone figured it out. Then the Rose cleared the highest tier, finally followed by the Necromancer. Uh, but they fell short. They were just waiting for Season 4 to come out so they could shine. How did this tier list get it so wrong? Should we even watch them? Don't worry, I'm going to answer all these questions, as well as provide you with a bunch of facts that's going to get us started on our journey through this new era of Diablo 4. Let's backtrack for a second. Back to, should we watch these build guides? Should we watch these tier lists? Absolutely. This is information from the best in the business, but make sure you take them with a grain of salt. These lists are a great source of information. They provide us with a huge wealth of insight to what potentially could be in the season. So what does that mean for you, for us? Do we have to wait hours, days, until they find the best builds and then record, edit, and post their videos? No. The first stop on our road trip through Sanctuary into season four is picking your class. This is going to be the most truthful hands down best information I can give anybody at all about Diablo 4. Sort through all of the tier lists, take in all of that information, and then ignore it. Pick the class that will be the most fun for your playstyles. Going back to our AOZ rankings, after everybody started complaining that the Barbarian was too strong, every single class, except for Necromancers, sorry, found super strong builds that no one knew about. When presented with a challenge, people rose to the occasion to create incredible builds. Pick a class that you will fall in love with. Play that, innovate, then wait and see what comes as the season unfolds. And the second stop on this exciting journey into season four is what to do after you log in. Very first thing you want to do is head over to the Iron Wolves and start your seasonal quest line. It may not be as flashy as the Barbara Heart, or as spectacular as the vampire powers were, or even as fun as having a pet that has a ton of unique advantages. But the Iron Wolves have a great set of rewards, including a resplendent spark. The reason we stop here first is because the Iron Wolves fight alongside you in Helltides. And can you guess where we're going to next? Man, you are smart. That's right. The third stop on our journey through Sanctuary takes us straight into Helltides. But why Helltides, you ask? That is a great question. Because, man, has Hell Ties been a slow, slow, slow grind. Good thing that the devs at Blizzard fixed that with a whole bunch of new updates. Here's what you need to know. Hell Ties now has a threat meter right here. As you kill monsters, this fills up. If you're around other people, which I highly suggest being around other people, group up, find people running around through Hell Ties, their threat meters will be filling up at the same time as yours. Now the best part. Once that meter is full, waves of monsters, elites, and even bosses will start to spawn. If you're around other people for the entire time of your threat meter, their threat meter will start to spawn as well. It just becomes an infinite wave of just monsters after monsters after elite after elite after boss after boss. And that means a ton of gear and a ton of experience. Eventually, you'll be rewarded with a profane mine cage. Now what this does, it increases the level of the monster by 10 which means you'll be gaining more experience, and it also makes your threat meter fill up faster. More monsters, more experience, faster threat meter, more experience. On top of this mine cage, make sure that you have an elixir on at all times, so you're stacking as much experience gain as you can. If your plan is to push endgame in the pit, I really would suggest saving the incense materials for later on when you actually start to make your push. If you're not too worried about it, 
pop an incense as well to stack even more experience. Join us on our clan's Discord to get in on launch day leveling. The link is going to be in the top of the description of this video. You don't need to join the clan, just be there with us on the launch day for some fun. On to the fourth stop of our trip through hell. We've picked our classes, we've stormed into hell tides with a horde of fighters, and now we've hit level 35. This is the lowest level that you can wear sacred gear. If your group feels strong or your build feels strong enough to take on the capstone dungeon, the Cathedral of Light, head over there, get yourself into tier 3. Once you're in tier 3, I would suggest right here, just continue to push Helltides, do your wisp requests as you go, and make sure you keep elixirs and mine cages on the entire time. The last and final step, before we part ways on our journey, you've been clearing Helltides, turning in whispers for boss and crafting materials, as well as gold and experience, you finally hit level 55. This is the new minimum level that you can wear ancestral gear at. It used to be level 60. Time for tier 4. However, the Elias fight is no joke. He's very tough. So if you head there at 55 and you don't feel strong enough, or your build doesn't hold up, that is okay. Head back into Helltide to hit some whisper quests, find some new legendaries until you really feel secure in your build, and then take on Elias and hit tier 4. Congrats! you've gotten to tier 4 for the first time in season 4. But now what? Focus on maxing out your resistances. This is super important, so please don't overlook it. If you want to survive in tier 4 at a lower level, you have to max out your resistances. Finding a pair of boots with 2-3 to three resistances on it is a really, really great way to start. Eventually, you can temper it onto other pieces of gear, but to start out, if you find boots with 2-3 to three resistances on them, you're golden. They increased the amount of resistances that gems give when you put them into your jewelry, so make sure that you use those. I always go with poison first, fire, and then lightning. The other ones can come after that, but make sure those three are definitely maxed out before you venture out into the world into tier four. Next, work on getting yourself a full set of ancestral gear, and then you can start the new and exciting tempering and masterworking crafting systems. Ooh, that is a lot for one day. Most of us might make it this far in just one day. So if this is where you leave off, you're off to a great start in the new season. However, if you're ready to keep pushing, the next step in our journey is actually going to be where you get to decide how you want to take your character. With a profane mind cage, pushing hell tides, you can get max experience bonus all the way up to level 100. So if your goal is to hit 100 as fast as possible, continue pushing hell tides with your clan or your friend group that will likely be the fastest route to 100. The other side of the path and the downside to continuously running hell tides is you get no glyph experience throughout the entire journey to 100. You'll be able to get glyphs from your whisper chests, but they won't be leveled up as you level. So if this is important to you, at about 70 to 80, I would suggest switching to Nightmare Dungeons so you can start leveling up those glyphs. Conveniently, this will also allow you to unlock the pit, which is done by clearing a tier 46 Nightmare Dungeon. Now, this may be a slower way to hit 100, but by the time you do, you'll be primed and ready to hop straight into that boss ladder and then eventually end game. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, share it with your friends. The goal is to get as many people set up for success at the start of the season as possible. I'll be live streaming on YouTube and Twitch pretty much every day. Hopefully, I see you there.